Welcome to our lecture online, and here we're going to discover another result of relativistic effects. Let's say we have a spaceship traveling very fast with velocity u relative to the stationary reference frame. And let's say that at the very front of the spaceship there is a flashing light, and let's say that the light flashes at a frequency of 100 Hz, so 100 flashes per second. But since this spaceship is moving so fast that um, by the time the next flash occurs, the first flash will have moved to a distance right here. The distance, of course, is going to be equal to the speed of the, the light, c, times the period, the time between flashes. So that will be the distance that the flash travels as it's going towards the observer. And then the next flash will occur, of course, but then the spaceship will have moved the distance this far, which is the speed of the spaceship, times the period, and of course, the period, of course, as seen by the observer on the Earth. And that means that the wavelength, which normally would have been this long, is going to be much shorter now. It's going to be compressed because the spaceship is moving towards the observer, giving, observer, giving the Doppler shift. And so the observed wavelength then will only be this long. And to find out what that is equal to, that has to be equal to c times t minus u times t. So that's going to be the observed wavelength by observer, which is equal to c minus u times the period. And again, the period as observed by the observer on the Earth. Because the period as observed by the person on the spaceship, let's say that's observer B, that's going to be equal to simply 1 over F, which is the frequency of the light on the spaceship. So this observer sees the frequency of the light at 100 Hz, and the period will be 1 over 100 Hz, or 1 100 of a second. But because the spaceship is moving very fast, whatever the time events are over here will be different as seen by a stationary observer according to this equation right here. So the time as seen by the observer on the Earth will be equal to the time as seen by the observer on the spaceship divided by 1 minus the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared or gamma times t sub naught. So if that's the case, we can then say that the period as seen by observer on the Earth is equal to gamma times the period as seen by person on the spaceship. And gamma, of course, depends upon the velocity of the observer or of the spaceship. So let's plug in the number that we have over here. Well, I didn't have a number. So let's say that we plug in this equal to 0.8c and figure out what that is equal to. All right, so in this case, uh, gamma which is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. That's going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0 0.8 squared. Of course, remember that the c's cancel out. And uh, so we have 0.8. We square that. We subtract that from 1. We then take the square root of that. And um, then we take the inverse. Okay, so we have gamma is equal to 1.667 which means that the period as seen by an observer on the Earth is equal to 1.667 times the period as seen by an observer over here. Now, remember that the speed of light, c, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And the speed of light is the same for every observer, no matter what the observer is doing and no matter what the, the source is doing. So that means that for the observer on the Earth, the speed of light is equal to the frequency observed times the wavelength observed. And of course, the frequency observed is what we're looking for, and the wavelength observed comes from this equation right here. So, plug in those numbers in, we can say, or we can rearrange the frequency observed here. So the frequency observed, which is what we're looking for, is equal to the speed of light divided by lambda observed. And lambda observed can be gotten from this equation right here. So this is equal to the speed of light divided by c minus u multiplied times t. And t can be related to t sub naught by this equation right here. So I'm going to use the general equation. So I'm going to use that as, uh, let's say, let me write the general equation down. So this is t is equal to t sub naught divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. Of course, the velocity being u. If we plug that in here, this will then be written as c divided by c minus u times t sub naught. And of course, the denominator here then will go to the numerator right here as 1 minus u squared over c squared. Like that. Now, simplifying this a little bit, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by c squared. 
So this can be written, let me go a little bit further here. So this is C times the square root of C squared minus U squared over C squared, the common denominator now, divided by C minus U times T sub naught. Of course, and again, remember, we're looking for the frequency observed. Uh, we can then see that we can cancel out a C squared and then divide it by the C right there. So if we then continue on over here, this is equal to C divided by C, if we factor out a C squared from the radical, times the square root of C squared minus U squared, that's a difference of um, square, so I can see, write this as C minus U times C plus U, and the whole thing divided by, and if I then square this and put on the radical, I can say this is equal to C minus U quantity squared, of course, this cancels out. We can't forget the T sub naught in the denominator right there. And of course, you can see that this C minus U will cancel out this C minus U. And finally, we can say that this is equal to uh, the square root of C plus U over the square root of C minus U. And then we have still the 1 over T sub naught. But remember that there's a relationship between T sub naught and F sub naught. So that means that I can write this as... Uh, times, whoop, let me simplify it like this, so I can write this as F sub naught right there, instead of 1 over T sub naught, I can write F sub naught, and so finally, we can write that the frequency observed by the station observer right there is equal to the square root of C plus U divided by C minus U times the frequency as seen by the observer on the spaceship. And that's how you find the frequency observed of an event where the event is moving really fast. And of course, if we then, as an example, plug in the numbers, we can say that the frequency then observed is equal to the square root of the speed of light, which is uh, C plus U, which is 0.8C, divided by speed of light, which is C minus 0.8C, times the original frequency, which we said was 100 hertz, And so this becomes 1.8c divided by 0.2c, and the c's will cancel out, so it would be 1.8 divided by 0.2, which is uh, 9, so that would be the square root of 9 times 100 hertz. And of course, the square root of 9 is the same as 3, so this would be 3 times 100 hertz, or 300 hertz. Which means that if you have a spaceship that's moving at 0.8c, 80% speed of light, and it has a flashing light at the very front, it's flashing at a frequency of 100 hertz, and far away, somebody on a stationary reference frame seeing the spaceship approach at 0.8c will see the frequency of the, of the light at 300 hertz. And that's how you do a problem like that.